One, action. Boom! Nailed it! I've seen some other people do this and I thought, well, you know what, I don't know if that's me. And then I stumbled across a video on YouTube the other day and I was thinking, I could do this. So this is a reaction video on a DIYer giving some tips and tricks on what they perceive as the correct method for stretching chain link fence. And then we'll add our input as a professional contractor that stretches miles and miles of chain link. And we'll see how those differ and we can see what methods, maybe he's got some some great hacks, maybe some hacks for doing things on a on the budget conscious method. And then we can show you the tools that we use as professional contractors. And we'll provide some links to those down below and I'll talk a little bit about those. So, And without further ado, let's get into this. Brought to you by Lifey Guy. Like the name too, Lifey Guy. At your chain link fence, you need to have three tools. The first tool you will need is a tension bar. Now this slides right in between inside of the chain link fence loops. The next thing you'll need is something to attach to your tension bar. So this is like a fence stretcher, you know, bar. You can see kind of what it looks like. These three hooks go around your tension bar and then you will use some sort of like strap or clamp to, uh, to wrap through here and pull this tight. Now, if you don't want to... He's doing good so far. So that is a tension bar and I hear a lot of people refer to that bar he's talking about as a, a truss bar or something else like that. We have tension bars and we have truss rods. Truss rods are used primarily on commercial fences and they're a round rod and that is for making your diagonal brace um, component on your on your bracing for commercial chain link fences. You don't see them in residential fences. And then the tool he's talking about is what we call a chain link rake. And so it's got rake fingers to grab into the chain link. And the reason that you use the tension bar in conjunction with the rake is because if you use the rake without the tension bar, you can actually distort the diamonds um, and it'll pull a little harder on some of them and distort them and bend them out a little bit. So if you slide the tension bar in the wire and then hook the rake onto the tension bar that's already inserted into the wire, you'll get a nice even pull all the way across and you won't distort your diamonds. Usually stretch even like a six foot tall fence with a rake that's only three feet tall and only has maybe three fingers. Um, probably a four foot rake would be a little bit better, but you can make do if that's all you have, you can make do with a, a shorter rake. Um, just watch how tight you get it. You don't want to spend about $30 at Menards to buy one of those metal fence stretchers. You could do something similar to it using a two by four that's maybe, you know, three or four feet long. On one side, you can put in hooks, three hooks, one at the top, middle and bottom sticking out kind of like my fingers sticking out like this. And then on this side of the two by four, you can put an eye hook that screws into here and that would also do the trick. Yet another option is you could just convince your line back. Now what he's talking about is not a bad hack at all. I mean, if your budget and we live in a small rural town in Wyoming and when you get ready to do your chain link fence, you may or may not be able to find one of those chain link rakes. So what he's talking about is building one out of a two by four and that's a completely viable option. Pretty budget conscious. I would imagine you could build one for maybe 12 bucks or something like that. You know, you're gonna need a couple bolt hooks or something like that that you get from the lumber yard and then just a short chunk of two by four, which most people have those laying around their house. So convince your linebacker NFL neighbor to pull it for you and just grab the tension bar and just run with it. That would probably also work. The next item you need is something like a fence stretcher clamp, kind of like this one or a come along, or you could even use something like toe straps, you know. So what he's holding up right there is a barbed wire stretcher. And while that may work, uh, it would probably work pretty good, I'm guessing, if you had the 2x4 because it's square. But if you had one of those rakes, it's not going to work as well. It's, it's probably going to be a little cumbersome to try and use, but in a pinch it would work. I like the idea of using ratchet straps, which he mentioned here, and I, maybe he's going to show us a piece of them. But I like the idea of using a ratchet strap even better. You know, something like... Uh... You know, something like this that you can kind of ratchet that'll get tighter and tighter that has a hook on one side. So before I go outside I love that and idea. demonstrate how to stretch a chain link fence, I want to make sure that you know to be careful to not overstretch your chain link fence. You're supposed to be able to squeeze one of the chain link fence diamonds and have it give a little bit. Something like that tension is probably about right where there's a little bit of give but not that much. So if you look here Two inch ratchet strap that he's talking about are readily available just about anywhere. The farm store sometimes have them super cheap. How much you're going to have to adjust is going to be dependent upon how much slack you have in your fence. So if you're stretching a hundred foot run of fence, you may have to 
stretch on it a little bit, then let it off, pull the slack out of it, and then start all over again and ratchet it again. So it just depends on how much you're pulling. Now, if you have a really short section, a lot of times we see short sections next to gates and things like that. If you have a short section, there are other tools that we use to do that. And on our website, we have things called bear holds, which would be one. And they're just a tool that hooks onto your tension bar and locks around the post, but it's got a little bit of extension. So as you crank it around, it pulls the fence tight. And that works really well for short sections. Another tool that we use as professionals is called a pole jack. And we sell those on our website. And they're basically a long bar with a rod that goes through it. They're kind of like a quick grip clamp. Like as you crank them over, they pull everything together and make things tighter. So that works really well because some of these tools, like the bear holds, you have to know exactly how long you want your chain link fence. Because once you slide the tension bar in there and then you crank that bear hold over, you aren't going to be able to unweave a straw if it's a little bit too long. On the pole jacks, you can actually hook it on way further back, pull your fence tight, and then have some slack wires here, or some slack chain link. Just basically pull it to the tension that you want and then uh, figure out which diamond to break and then unweave one, put your tension bar in, hook it all up, and then have that loose slack to play with. So two different ways of looking at it uh, and, and having that loose slack does, definitely makes it a little bit easier to make up your fence and get all the bolts and the tension bands and things like that on. So. If you look here, my fence is actually a little too tight. Probably one ratchet too tight. But I don't know if you can see here, but it looks like this diamond might be a little bit wider than the rest. That might have happened because I used a little bit too much tension. One thing to keep in mind is... If he hooked that tensioner or his rake into that piece, it could have distorted it just a little bit like that. Usually what we see is if you overstretch it, the fence will actually start shrinking, especially if you buy a really cheap low-grade fence, um, which is what most of the the big box stores will sell you is an 11 and a half gauge product and some of them will even sell you a 12 and a half gauge product which is really bad but what will happen is if you overstretch it the fence will actually start to shrink and the diamonds will oblong you usually don't get one diamond in the middle that oblongs it's usually a whole series of diamonds that will start to stretch out the other thing he doesn't talk about is if you overstretch your fence it makes it really hard to dress it out if you've ever gone by a chain link fence and the top rail is all nice and flowing but the chain link looks like this, that's because somebody didn't dress it out. And if you overstretch the wire, then it makes it really difficult to grade that out and make that, that top of those diamonds look very uniform and flow with the top rail so that it's all flowing. What we do in our company and the standard in the industry is, is to have the top diamond have the middle of the top diamond line up with the middle of your rail so you've got about a half a diamond sticking up above your top rail. When you go to build your fence, you'll see that it, especially if it's galvanized after weaving, it will not want to flow well and you'll have to work at it a little bit to kind of to kind of grade that out. And we sell some tools on our website that also help people do that and they're called top rail dressers and then we have a foot dresser because sometimes you need to pull down on the wire and when we get to our really tall heavy duty wires, it can be tough and so we use uh, what we call a foot rake and it, you can stand on the wire, it hooks into the wire and then you can stand on it and push, pull the wire down or push it down with your feet. One thing to keep in mind is to always have your nice side of your fence, the smooth side and all the nice side of your bolts facing outward to your neighbors. Once you get the fence mesh rolled out all- I don't disagree with that at all. All of your bolts and everything, no matter what you do, the chain link is gonna be on the outside of the pipe or on the outside of your yard. So that the inside, all the bolts point into your yard. One of the things that drive us professionals nuts is when we see people and they'll put some of the bolts pointing out, some of them pointing in, and I always tell my guys, if you're gonna do something wrong, at least be consistent at it. So if all of your bolts are wrong, at least make them all wrong, but it's better to have all your bolts pointing into your yard and uh, make sure that everything's really good and uniform. All, you know, 50 feet of it or so, you want to stretch it by hand and pull it kind of nice and tight and nice and vertical, flat up against the line posts. You then can take some wires and attach them to the top rail to help the fence hug the top rail. And these should not be right next to the line post because um, you're going to be stretching the fence. And if it moves too far, you don't want it to hit the top rail cap on top of the line post. It's important to note that when you are attaching a line post to your chain link mesh, to use at least three wire ties to loop around your fence and to attach it to the line post at the top, middle, and bottom. Okay, so what he's saying there is right. That would be absolutely 100% correct for a four foot fence. The rule that we use in the standard specs in the industry for attaching your wire to your pipe is 
It needs to be 24 inches on center for your top rail. So every 24 inches you need to tie and then on your posts, on the line posts and then on your tension bar, the tension bands need to be spaced at 15 inches apart, no greater than 15 inches apart. And that same rule applies to your post ties. So the post ties need to be no greater than 15 inches apart. So if you want to build it like they require us to build it in the industry, then it's no more than 15 inch spacing on your ties for your posts and no more than two feet for your ties on your top rail. If you'll notice in that video, one of the things you saw is I've seen a lot of people do this, but they'll actually tie off their fence so that the top of the chain link is even with the top of the top rail. Now, if that's your preference, that's totally okay, but you need to think about that ahead of time because you may have to set your post a little bit taller. In the industry, what we do is we set our post three inches lower than the height of the fabric. So if I'm setting a 48 inch tall fence and it's going over grass or dirt, then we'll set the, or we'll mark our line posts and set them a minimum of 45 inches out of the ground. If they're 46 inches out of the ground, I know my wire is going to be about an inch high. The terminal post will be four inches taller than the line post. So the terminal post will be four foot one. That's the minimum they need to be out of the ground, unless I want to start digging and trenching. That gives you those three points to distribute all that tension that's built up between the prior post and your subsequent line post. If you don't do this, like say if you did the top and middle but not the bottom, you can just imagine that it would lose all that tension on the bottom and it would be all loose at the bottom and tight at the top. Now I stretched and assembled most of the fence last night. What I like to do is I like to go every other post. So I'll go, I'll start at the second line post and stretch the fence and then attach it to the first line post. And then I'll go to the third line post and stretch it and then I'll attach it to the second line post. So you can do that, but that adds a lot of extra work. What we do in the, as professionals in the industry is we'll go and stretch an entire side. So uh, the maximum run that we'll stretch is probably 200 feet. Um, we don't like to pull more than 200 feet just because of the friction on the ground, especially when we get some of the heavier commercial grade wires, uh, we can start getting some distortion. But what we'll do is we'll stretch 200 feet at a time and we'll pull that all the way to the end. So rather than stretching every other post, which can add a lot of time to your project, you can go from, in most yards, you can stretch the entire side. So from a gate post all the way to the corner or from a corner post to another corner post if there's no gate. And that speeds you up tremendously, just stretching that entire side rather than stretching every other post. Think about that. And if you're using some mechanical devices to help you stretch it, then you aren't gonna have problems. Um, if you are using your linebacker friend to help reef on it, then you may, may run into some troubles. But uh, for the price of a ratchet strap, I think I'd probably use a mechanical advantage to, to help me accomplish that tension. But if you wanted to, you could honestly stretch, you know, from line posts, you know, four or five down the row and stretch it and assemble multiple line posts at the same time. You want to have one extra tension bar than what you actually need. So that way you can use it for stretching but not run out of tension bars when you need to do the final stretch to secure it to the terminal post. Okay, let's go outside. And what he said is 100% true. You will need that extra tension bar if you don't have one of these other uh, items like a bear hold or a pull jack. Uh, those are probably the two absolute most common tools. And if you have those tools, let's say you have two pull jacks and two bear holds, you can stretch an entire backyard with those two tools alone and you won't even need a rake and we sell those on our website. That's what we use. If we're gonna go in a backyard, that's what we're gonna use. We don't use any of the rakes until we start getting into really long runs where we have to do things by hand. But the pole jacks are probably the number one tool we use for almost everything. Uh, anytime we're doing great big long runs and we're doing thousands and thousands of feet of chain link, we have attachments that go on our skid steers that are really speed up the process. But for your backyard, a pole jack is, two pole jacks would do the job very well. So most people recommend taking your tension wire and running it along the bottom in between the two terminal posts before you attach and stretch your, your fabric to your uh, fence posts. But I didn't do that. So I'm going to actually have to weave this tension wire through the bottom in between the line posts. Okay, as he was walking away, I can see, I can see a little bit of what I'm talking about. I assume that he's already got this tied off, but you can see a little bit of that wave um, over the top rail if you look hard in his video you can see some of that wave where he needs to just spend a couple minutes and just dress that out a little bit looks like he's got a pretty nice flow with his top rail but he could give it that real professional look if he took a minute and just dressed out that chain link uh, to flow better with the top rail so you don't have those inconsistencies um, above it 
Now what he's saying about tension wire is 100% true. And he's got what I assume is probably like a nine gauge smooth wire. And what we use a lot of in residential is a two strand twisted. It's basically a barbless wire that you get at your local farm store. And we'll stretch that up post to post. And what that tension wire does at the bottom of the fence is it helps keep things from being able to push out because chain link has a lot of give. It doesn't have a lot of give in the center, but at the top and the bottom, it can have a lot of give. And since there's nothing down there to tie it to, if you don't install a bottom rail, that tension wire, you can hog ring that tension wire to your fabric and it makes it a lot harder to push that out for pets and stuff like that. If you have pets that you're really worried about, the next best thing would be to add another bottom rail in between the line posts right at the bottom bottom of the fence. And then the step below, beyond that would be to add an anti-dig barrier, a concrete mow curb or something like that to help prevent pets from getting out. And, and the fabric. Uh, and then you use the little hog ties, little like pieces of metal wires to kind of secure the this wire to the fence fabric and that just kind of helps it to not deform if someone kicks a soccer ball and it hits the bottom of the fence or if a animal tries to climb underneath it makes it a little harder for them to do that. I apologize I don't have a lot of fencing to demonstrate right now but I do need to restretch the end here it's a little too loose you can see when I squeeze it there's just too much give. Back there, right when he was talking about the too much give, he's 100% right. I can see a whole lot of slack right there. But the other thing I noticed is this terminal post is sticking up a lot further than it needs to. Like I said, I mentioned before, is our terminal post, we usually cut those four inches taller than our line post. So we cut our line post three inches shorter than the fabric height, and then our terminal post would be basically one inch taller than the fabric height. That changes a little bit if you're gonna add barbed wire and do a commercial fence, but right now what we're talking about is residential. I'm going to bend this wire here at the top and kind of twist it to take this off and then I'm going to um, move the fence over about another inch. I'm going to stretch it and attach it just to add a little bit more tension because this is a little bit too loosey-goosey for my liking. Pliers and gloves can come in handy because you have to bend lots of little pieces of metal. We like to use what's called uh, lineman's pliers or nines, that's what we use. They also make a special fence plier, but we, li we like just a standard uh, electrician set of lineman pliers. And you can see how he's attaching his tension or running his tension bar through back behind so that he has all that slack wire. That makes it a ton easier to hook up or do your tie on. It looks like he's got about a three foot rake. The pole jack I was talking about works a lot like one of these, only more purpose built. Like say this, what he's using, that stretcher he's using is specifically for barbed so wire. Since this is the last stretch, there's gonna be a little bit more give um, because there's gonna be the slack in between right here and the terminal post. So it should be a little bit tighter on this side. So um, the tightness combined with the slack of that side should make it about the right tightness. Here's another thing to think about is if you're stretching 100 feet and then you do have that little bit of chain link between your tension bar that you're stretching with and your post, you're never gonna get that quite as tight. So that whole run of fence, if you stretch from corner to corner or end to end, whatever your endpoints are, you can absorb all that slack when you don't get it quite as tight there at the very end through the whole run of fence instead of absorbing it between the terminal post and the next line post. So he's gonna have a really tough time with the tools he has right here to get that really tight. If he had a pull jack, a pull jack would do that because he could basically pull it by hand and figure out exactly where he needed to break his wire, run his tension bar right through the end of the chain link, then stretch right to that and he'd be able to get that tight. But with the tools he has here, um, it's gonna be very difficult. So I'll be interested to see if he's able to pull it off. Tightness. Tension bar, here we go. And you can see he's got his tension bar back off the, looks like he's got it back off the terminal post a little bit. Some tension bars have a little hole at the bottom, some don't. If yours does, what you can do is you can bend this open, this bottom loop, and then you can kind of use it to kind of make sure the tension bar won't slip down. Time to put these... Uh... You can do that when you get into the commercial and industrial world. Um, our tension bars aren't usually built like that. And so what we end up doing with that little, that little tail 
that's just kind of running wild, we'll trim that off. It's one of those details that gets overlooked and we think is the mark of a true professional is just trimming that tail off and then re-knuckling that over so that it looks professional. But he's right that that is, that is to help you so that that tension bar can't slide down. That does get to be a little bit of a pain. Tension bands back on and hopefully this is tight enough. And tighten the nut on before it... Ouch. Squeeze. <sighs> What he's hooking onto the tension bar are called tension bands, and there's a difference between a tension band and a brace band. And if you need help with that, we have another video so that you know the difference between the two. The mesh is a little too close to the ground and not quite up to the bar. So now I've got to loosen it and then kind of drag everything up. Okay, so I just uh, kind of repositioned these up to be a little higher. So that way the very top of the chain link would be kind of right where I want it, just above the bar. Now I'm going to go ahead and loosen up this clamp by shaking it, give it a little shake, Woo! and see how the tension if is. If you just hit that handle over, it'll just pop right out. You just knock that handle forward and it'll, it releases that oh, dog. Yeah. That's what I like, just a little bit of give, but not that much. Now I can take this down, can take this extra tension bar out. Probably a touch loose for my liking, but he did a pretty decent job now of getting the slack out for what he had. The tension wire, I'm going to have to loop it in between the mesh and the line posts. And that's going to be a pain. Definitely install your tension wire before you stretch up all your fence. That needs to be, the fabric going on needs to be the last thing you do. Now one of the other things I can't tell right now, but if you think about chain link fence, it's actually three dimensional. So you the way it's weaved because you can slide your bar down through that slot between my fingers. You always want to tie to the wire that is closest. There will be a wire that's close to your rails and your post and then there's going to be one that's away from it. You don't want to tie your wires onto the wire that is furthest away. If you think about that, that being a three dimensional product, you don't want to tie your wires onto the wire that is not resting right up against your metal post or your top rail. And that will uh, now pull it nice and tight. I've got this little clamp tool that I can use to kind of tighten the tension wire. And then we use a little hog tie clips to clip the wire to the fence mesh, you know, every half foot or every foot. When you're stretching fence, sometimes you'll see imperfections, but usually if you just take things slow and you try to be consistent at consistent heights and, you know, make consistent tension, usually when you're done, you get something that's pretty beautiful like this. And it's just so rewarding to, to do a fence um it's fun all right so that wasn't too bad I, I i think that he could have had some tools that would have made the job easier but i think for what he had made do with the best that he had and what he was able to find locally i think maybe the strap would have served him a little bit better um, with his rake rather than using the barbed wire stretcher he didn't really talk about how he stretched up his tension wire and i, I would imagine that that probably proved a little bit cumbersome for him we have a thing that's called a T-bar stretcher and we just make them in our shop. We'll put a link to one down below. What you run into on chain link fences with the tension wire and also your barbed wire is you'll end up with a lot of really short runs and no matter how hard you try with all the mechanical devices uh, like the stretcher he was using and some of the other stretchers that are available on the market is, is there's always going to be that slack and you just can't ever get it tight but you can use a T-bar stretcher which is a tool you can easily make up with a drill bit and a little bit of metal, and it will get your, your tension wire and your barbed wire tight every time. And maybe sometime, I guess if there's interest, we'll show you how to use one, but that's the easiest way to get all your tension wire tight on your backyard. If you really get into commercial fencing, then you have seven gauge tension wire, and let me tell you, that stuff's, it's a brute. That's a, that's a carpal tunnel causer is what that is. And then we use nine gauge steel hog rings on commercial fence, but the hog rings he's probably gonna use on this are gonna be 12 and a half gauge steel. And so they're pretty easy to bend. Don't get the nine gauge if you're just doing a backyard, there's no need to. Just make sure you place those every two feet, just like your top rail ties. Spacing needs to be every two feet. So if your posts are 10 feet apart, you need basically five in between your posts. So that's a couple things. I like the way he did it. I like the way he tackled the project. And while well, he could have done some things a little bit easier and saved himself some time, uh, not a bad job for a guy that doesn't do this for a living. So if you are interested in doing it yourself, we can sell you uh, at SWI. We have all the tools available at swifence.com. And if you're in the Wyoming market, we're happy to help you with all your materials and provide you with tips and tricks that may make your project go a little bit simpler, whether it's chain link cedar or any type of fence. So until next time, you have a good dang day.
There you go. You know what to do? Yeah, we can't see you. See, you're not on the monitor right there. There you go. Don't get your fingers in the way. <laughs> Come on, hurry. We don't have all day. <laughs> it's up. Look at the lens right there. If it's not up here, then it's not in the shot. <laughs> Scene one, take one, action. Boom! Nailed it!